Hello, this is Chuck Ridgeway, Automation Technology Manager at Horner. Thanks for joining us for another Tuesday live stream. Well, we think we've got a great topic for you today. Here it is. We're going to take a look at 2024. Yes, a preview of 2024 at Horner Automation. Now, if you missed the show last week, we looked backwards at 2023 and mostly it was kind of a collection of outtakes and bloopers. So it was a short, fun show. If you haven't seen that yet, I'd encourage you to check it out. It's worth a laugh. But today we're going to be looking forward at 2024. And that means a look ahead at the hardware and software products that we have planned for you here at Horner for this year. Now, a lot of these products have been in the works for quite some time. So we've got a lot of confidence that these products are going to see the light of day in 2024. But as always, you know, release dates are always a little bit fluid. So we won't be talking specific release dates and pricing and those sorts of things. But by the end of the day, you should have a really good idea at what's coming in 2024 from Horner. Now, the original plan was to have Casey Gardner, our product manager, join us live. But Casey, like a lot of the folks at the factory, have been, has, feeling, uh, has been feeling a little bit under the weather. But he's a trooper, so he won't be joining us live on the program itself. But he is standing by to answer any questions you have if you're watching live. So give us those questions in the chat section. If you're watching on replay, like a lot of you do, give us those questions and comments in the comment section. And we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. Okay, so without further ado, let's just dive in to the content today, which again is a preview of the products, both hardware and software for 2024 from Horner. All right, here we go. All right, so we're actually gonna start with a product that is already available. Now it hasn't been available very long and we haven't really had a chance to talk much about it. So that's why I decided to lead off today's program with this particular product. Now this product is the X5 Prime. Now for those of you who are familiar with the X5, that's kind of a unique OCS model at Horner. The X5 has a package very similar to the micro OCS, but internally it's more similar to the XL series from a memory standpoint, at least from the standpoint of a lot of the features that you normally find on the XL series but it has a unique IO complement, as you can see from the inset there in the upper right. It's got four digital in, all high speed, four digital out, and four analog in. Now the X5 Prime effectively updates all the internals of the X5 to the latest Horner SOM, which provides lots more variable storage and lots more memory capacity than you'll find in the standard X5. So the standard X5 has about a thousand retentive variables, whereas the X5 Prime has 50,000 or more retentive variables. So again, some of the restrictions on memory have been totally lifted from an X5 Prime standpoint. And like the rest of the Prime series, absolutely no internal batteries, a faster processor, those sorts of things. So the X5 Prime is available today, and I would encourage you to check it out, especially if you're an X5 user, because the X5 Prime, with all of its enhancements, is priced at par with the X5. Okay, the next product we're going to talk about, now we're getting into products that are on their way, is another Prime model, and that's the X10 Prime. Now, this is going to be the first 10.1-inch widescreen OCS that has XL-style I.O. Now, most people are familiar with our Micro OCS X10. That's got this nice 10-inch widescreen but it has the micro OCS series for memory and for performance and for IO complement. The X10 Prime has the prime characteristics in terms of memory and speed and IO style. And it's got the XL style of IO, which means you order it from the factory, you know, as a model zero, model two, model three, model four, etc. And one thing that you'll really like with that larger screen some of the limitations in terms of the number of objects per screen that are currently in place with the micro OCS are not in place with the X10 Prime. So you literally can have a thousand objects on a single screen if you are so inclined for a particular project. So again, the X10 Prime, I think it's gonna be a very popular option in the Prime series. 
Now, the last new Prime model I'm going to talk about is the XL15 Prime. And the XL15 Prime is really, one way to look at it is it is the successor to the XL Plus model. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with XL Plus, XL Plus was our first 15-inch controller in the XL series. And it was based from a hardware standpoint on a SOM that Horner didn't design from scratch. Now, as it turned out, it was the only model that didn't feature a Horner designed and manufactured SOM. And unfortunately, during the supply chain crisis, this is the one product, the XL Plus series, was the one product which really had some negative ramifications to supply chain issues. The manufacturer of the SOM wasn't able to keep supplying the SOM as it needed to be. And so this product, the XL Plus at least, has been you know really not shipping for quite some time. The XL15 Prime, while from the front, it looks similar to the XL Plus. It's actually an all new hardware package. So I checked out the hardware package, oh, about a week or so ago, and I was very impressed. So it has the same four by three aspect ratio, 15 inch diagonal, same resolution on the screen. All that is the same, but the actual physical package is, has been updated really from scratch. It's a really nice stiff package and I'm very impressed with it. And it's got the XL style IO as the XL Plus had before it. And again, for anybody who's looking for a larger unit with more space for graphics, the XL15 Prime is gonna be a really nice option. So again, look for the XL15 Prime here in 2024. All right, now let's start talking about OCS IO. Now, last year was a big year for OCS IO. Now, it wasn't the first year that OCSIO was introduced. However, it was a big year in terms of new OEMs and end users starting to adopt OCSIO as their IO uh, family of choice from Horner. And one of the reasons that happened was finally, <laughs> because of a huge backlog at UL, we finally got the UL approval on the OCSIO family. Now, it was not due to any technical issues of any kind. It was strictly because of that backlog at UL. So that first series of modules that we released some time ago is now fully UL approved for hazardous locations. And now we're preparing the second set of releases for OCSIO. Now, what modules are included in this second set? Well, we've got higher density IO modules. So 16 point DC in, 16 point DC out, and some eight channel analog modules. An analog input module that supports voltage and current and an analog output module that supports voltage and current. And one other thing that's coming also, and that is an additional option as an OCS IO base. So that's gonna be called the new CNX100. And that particular base will have the same CAN connections as we've always offered before with the CNX116, but the CNX100 does not have any built-in IO at all. So it's gonna be a little less expensive and it's also gonna be good for those retrofit applications where you're trying to match exactly the memory map of an existing system. So again, CNX100 is another new addition to the OCS IO family in this next round of OCS IO modules. Now let's turn our attention to the biggest question that comes up every day at Horner and that is when can we get Seascape 10? So uh, we're here to tell you Seascape 10 development is going terrific. In 2023, we had a, a really good beta program where we had six solid months of existing OCS users working with Seascape 10, giving us feedback, uh, reporting bugs, suggesting new features. And we are in the process now of giving all that feedback or as much as we can fully incorporated. So won't be much longer to wait. Um, I have total confidence in where we're at with Seascape 10 shouldn't have to wait more than another month or two. Now, for those of you who are looking for additional information on what is Seascape 10, we've got a sneak preview video. I think it's called Seascape 10 Preview available on our YouTube channel. So check that out. It'll give you lots of good information. Now, I will tell you there are some additional things coming in Seascape 10 you won't find in that preview video, but um, you're going to get a lot of good information if you do check that out. Okay, now let's talk about some of the new hardware products that will be released pretty close to concurrently with Seascape 10. Now, one of the big deals about Seascape 10 is it's got a completely new, really advanced graphics engine 
that it incorporates. So if you're looking for some really advanced graphics for trending and just graphic objects in general and recipes and those sorts of things, you'll find all kinds of enhanced functionality in Seascape 10. But to fully take advantage of that enhanced functionality, you'll need to use some new hardware models, all-in-one controllers from Horner. So let's start going through the Canvas series, which is the first Horner OCS series to take advantage of that new graphics engine. All right, let's start with the Canvas 5 and the Canvas 7. Now, in general, the Canvas series features a dual core microprocessor where you have one dedicated core for graphics and another one dedicated for logic and networking. So it offers some really nice performance as an example. Also, just about every Canvas model features Excel style IO on the back. So again, you order it from the factory as a Model 0, Model 2, Model 3, etc for the specific IO that you need. Now, the one exception to that is the Canvas 5. The Canvas 5 happens to use X5 style IO. So it's got the four DC in, four DC out, and four analog in. But the rest of the Canvas line features XL style IO. So these are the first two models available. And these should be pretty much concurrent with the, with the release of Seascape 10. And again, the big deal is the dual core microprocessor and of course the new graphics support. Now the next two Canvas models I'm going to review with you here have a little bit of a familiar look. And you can tell just from looking at the front that they look a little different than the Canvas 7 and the Canvas 5. And this is the 7D and the 4. Now one thing you'll notice about these products is they still have dedicated function keys, even though from a graphics design standpoint, they've been de-emphasized somewhat. Now, why do we still offer dedicated function keys on a couple of Canvas models in 2024? Well, we do that because two of our most popular models historically have been the XL7 and the XL4. And those products are extremely popular and they both offer dedicated function keys. So we thought it was important to pass that feature through into the Canvas series. So if you have any XL7 or XL4 users who are looking to adopt Canvas and they want to keep going with their function keys, they have that option. So this is the new Canvas 7D and the Canvas 4. Now, another differentiating factor with the 7D is the fact that it has dual Ethernet and dual CAN. So for any Canvas unit that has a D as part of the part number at the end, that's what that uh, differentiates there. Okay, so these are the new Canvas 4 and Canvas 7D models. Now, a new model that I think is gonna be extremely popular in the Canvas line is the Canvas 10D. And that's because it's got the largest screen area available for this new graphics oriented series. And like the 7D, it has dual ethernet and dual CAN. But just the fact that it has this larger screen, I believe is gonna make this a very popular option for those customers who care about graphics. And one of the reasons that they're selecting Canvas could be that they really care about graphics and the Canvas 10D gives them more screen real estate to play with. Okay, this next product definitely has me excited. So this is a new member of the OCS IO family coming in 2024, and it's a new micro CPU. So this new micro CPU is a logic controller, okay? And it features a lot of the same connectivity that you're used to seeing on OCS. It's got Ethernet, it's got serial ports, it's got a CAN port, micro SD, USB for programming, all those sorts of things. And this micro CPU also has built-in I.O. So you can think of it as a micro PLC in a lot of ways. And it's got a really nice complement of built-in I.O., including a large number of those flexible inputs uh, that we first introduced on the CNX116 base. Remember, flexible inputs can be configured between digital inputs or analog inputs, and those are supported here on this micro CPU. Now, another cool thing about the micro CPU is the fact that you can expand it locally just by, you know, plugging in OCS I.O. modules directly to the side of it on the DIN rail. So if the built-in I.O. complement isn't exactly what you need or you need some additional I.O., you can add uh, OCS IO modules right to the DIN rail and plug directly in to the micro CPU. So that is a very cool feature. Gonna make this a very versatile PLC really. Again, part of the OCS IO family that we're really excited about. 
Now this product takes a lot of what we introduced in the micro CPU and, or we're going to be introducing in the micro CPU and just really kicks it up a notch. So this is our high performance CPU, but again, part of the OCS IO family. Now what makes this high performance? Well, it features the same core processor that you'll find in Canvas. All right, so dual core processor, one dedicated for um, logic and networking and another dedicated for graphics. Now, why in the world would you need a graphics core in this CPU, which doesn't appear to have a screen of any size, at least locally? Well, first of all, it does include a screen, but that screen is really just there as a system menu for setting things like IP address and that sort of thing. The real horsepower to drive a screen is required because this particular product supports what we're calling plug and play displays or remote display components. Not a full unit that requires programming, but literally a remote display component that connects to the high performance CPU over a single cable that carries power, the touchscreen signals and all the display information, of course. And that screen, that remote display component, can be located within 50 feet or so of the CPU. And we're offering several different remote displays or plug and play displays as we're going to be calling them. Some of which are IP67 rated, so they won't even need to be installed in any kind of an enclosure. Others that are IP20 rated, which means you're gonna install them in a typical enclosure. And then once they're installed properly, then they're gonna have the full you know, waterproof NEMA 4X, IP67 or IP65 type ratings, etc. So that's very exciting, the fact that we're going to be supporting those remote displays. And those are an option. So if you're really just looking for a high performance PLC type functionality, you don't have to add the remote display. Now, there's a lot to like in addition to that with this new CPU. For one, it's dual Ethernet. Okay. It's also got the ability to add all of its local I.O. or at least eight slots of local I.O. just by plugging in OCS I.O. to the side. And it also has, you can see that yellow RJ45 port there in the center. It also has the ability to add an additional eight modules of synchronous I.O. that is scanned synchronously with the logic scan. So a lot to like there on this new high performance Horner CPU. Again, one of the products I'm really excited about for 2024. Okay, now we've got even more planned for OCSIO in general, including another round, yet another round later in the year of modules. So we've got an eight channel thermistor module on the way. Uh, what are thermistors you may ask? Well, thermistors are temperature sensors that are very frequently used in applications where you're measuring ambient style temperatures, you know, like HVAC, or any other type of applications where, you know, typical air temperatures and things and ambient ranges, you know, are typical. So we've always supported thermistors at Horner and we're gonna be adding it to the OCSIO family through an eight channel module. We've also got a really high performance, high speed counter module on the way that has both high speed inputs and high speed outputs. Uh, that's a pretty impressive module when that'll be available. And we've got a mix module that in one module has a mixture of digital and analog. So that's on the way as well. So again, so much going on with OCSIO this year, not only new modules and a new base with the CNX100, but a couple new CPUs that I think people are gonna really like. Okay, now let's take a sneak preview at a really different looking product. And that is really what you could consider the first OCS designed from the ground up for mobile applications. Now, OCS has been used in mobile applications for years. It's actually one of our better segments, but we've never designed an OCS specifically for mobile. And we've done that this time. So it was actually a joint development with a major mobile manufacturer. And as you can see from the package, especially when you take a look at the rear view, it's really been designed from the ground up with mobile in mind. It's, it's got a ruggedized package, which can withstand harsh environments. And as you can see from the rear view there, it uses the same type of ruggedized connectors that you'll find in mobile applications. So again, designed from the ground up as a mobile OCS, but programmed like any other OCS. So you can use your standard logic programs in Seascape and again, program it like any other OCS. You just got a specially designed package for those mobile applications available to you now. 
Now, finally, what we're going to talk about is something else that's got us excited at Horner. So for the first time, we're going to be offering an OCS cloud service called OCS 360. Now, I can only give you just kind of a sneak peek today of what we're talking about. But with OCS 360, you'll have the ability to remotely access your OCS controllers, to be able to get alarm notifications over email or maybe even text at some point. You'll have the ability to push data from your OCS very easily with just clicking a couple of buttons uh, in Seascape to be able to push data to the OCS 360 cloud. And you'll be able to do data logging on the cloud. You'll be able to view live data or historical data through dashboarding. And one thing to consider is that in 2024, there's more and more discussion about machine learning. Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. And effectively, what people are looking to do, and they're just starting to look at it from an industrial standpoint, is how can we use historical data on a machine to effectively uh, learn from that data and improve machine performance through artificial intelligence? Well, that is very exciting, but it absolutely requires historical data to even begin to take a look at machine learning. And you're generally, most people feel, most scholars feel you're going to need a minimum of a year of historical data before you can realistically start looking at, you know, uh, models for machine learning, which means the earlier you can start capturing that history data, the better off you're going to be. So we're going to make that as easy as possible through OCS 360. And that's just one of a number of features that we'll be offering our customers with different plans and things in order to you know, accomplish some of those goals. Okay, so that's OCS 360. So that's a look at the hardware and software products that we're looking at for 2024. And again, we've made a lot of progress on just about everything I've shown you, actually on everything I've shown you today. So we've got a lot of confidence. This is gonna be a big year here at Horner for new product releases. Now, in addition to, of course, products and software, we've also got a busy trade show schedule in 2024. So you'll have an opportunity in the United States, at least, to see us at four national trade shows. I've got them listed there in May, August, September, and October. And then for our European folks, we are still planning on participating in the Nuremberg show in November. So that'll be available later in the year as well. So it's a Anytime you can come see us at a trade show, you can spend some one-on-one -on -one time, talk about your application, get some really specific details on what Horner's working on and get a really good detailed preview at these trade shows. So I would encourage you to plan on joining us at one of those this year. Okay, now don't forget also that this will be a big year for training at Horner. And the standard training courses are shown here on the screen and you can sign up for them today on our website. I will tell you, even though I don't have any additional information right now, we've got a number of other training courses scheduled, which we will be announcing kind of as time progresses through this first quarter. So you can expect not only our basic and advanced courses as we've always offered, but you can also expect some additional courses, some of which we've never offered before in 2024. And again, as I have more information on those, we'll be sharing them with you here on the channel. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up the information I wanted to share with you today. Now, if you're watching this on replay, I would encourage you to make a comment, ask a question in the comment section. We're usually pretty good about getting back to you pretty quickly. So I would encourage you to do that. Now, there's lots of places online where you can get information about Horner Automation and our products, starting, of course, with our website at www.hornerautomation.com. Of course, you've got our Horner APG YouTube channel with all of our automation videos and our lighting videos. And then we're very active on LinkedIn as well. So don't forget to check us out online here at Horner. Now, next week, we're going to start a two-part series where we're going to be programming in structured text again. So IEC has never been more popular. We've been supporting it for many years at Horner, and we continue to do so. And so we're going to be focusing the next two weeks on a couple different aspects of structured text style programming. Structured text is one of the most popular languages available in the IEC languages, which, of course, are available in Seascape. And we'll be effectively going through string handling with structured text next week. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, don't hesitate to do so. It doesn't cost anything. 
And if you choose notifications when you subscribe, you'll be notified every time we go live and every time we post a new video. Okay, so I hope today was informative for you. And don't forget, post those questions in the comment section if you're watching on replay. Okay, so until next week, let's all get out there and do us some good. Oh, 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 oh,